Hi, good evening. Um, it's really great to be here. I am very excited to participate in this wonderful panel, and I want to thank you for coming out tonight. I live in San Diego now, but I, I got my undergraduate degree at Hunter College, and so it's always great to come back to New York and be a part of a CUNY program. And I definitely want to thank Neil uh, Stimler and Matt Gold for inviting me and the uh, CUNY Humanities um, program. The Balboa Park Commons Project is a project to create an online library of aggregated digital collections representing the diverse cultural organizations in Balboa Park. And it's primarily an uh, education resource for teachers in San Diego. That's the target audience. However, it's meant for everybody. Uh, has anyone here actually been to Balboa Park in San Diego? Oh, that's great. So a good amount of you. So let me tell you a little bit about um, Balboa Park for those of you who haven't been there because this collaboration is a, is a geographic collaboration. And it is um, uh, in the heart and soul and center of San Diego. It is a cultural um, and tourist destination and it's over uh, 1,200 acres park. It's one of the first, um, first public parks founded in the United States and it has 20 um, over 20 museums and over 80, uh, 80 civic organizations within the park. It's a wonderful place to work. It's a great place to hang out. There's tons of things going on all the time in the park and it's, it's just a really great uh, feature to San Diego. And I work for an art organization called Balboa Park Online Collaborative, BPOC. And BPOC, I wanna tell you a little bit about the organization and why we're working on uh, a digital commons uh, portal. The BPOC was founded in 2008 by a local foundation, the Legler Benbow Foundation, which uh, supports civic life in San Diego and has uh, financially supported many of the museums and initiatives in Balboa Park. And in 2008, the foundation really felt that um, it, it wanted to fund the museums in the area of technology, but it didn't feel that it should fund each uh, individual museum on their specific technology project. It, the the um, foundation had this great vision. Why don't we actually fund them to share technologies, to create shared platforms, shared resources, so that um, all the museums in the park, all the organizations, especially the small ones who might only have one or two staff members, volunteers, so they can um, actually get this technology as well. So um, Balboa Park Online Collaborative was uh, formed as a project, as a three-year project, and we're actually now our own uh, 5013C. So we have grown from being this idea to actually being a sustainable um, organization, which is really great. And our main focus is to encourage strategic technology collaboration between the Balboa Park uh, cultural organizations. And what's also exciting that uh, projects I've been working on at BPOC are also strategic partnerships with uh, universities and, um, and corporations and other uh, civic organizations with the museums and BPOC to bring technology into the park uh, museums, technology that the museums would normally have, have access to. So we're really all about ex executing a fundamental change in the way park organizations approach the use of technology. And um, we uh, really help address common problems by shared tools, and that's what the commons is all about. So um, just to give you an idea of the kind of projects we work on, we work a lot on professional development and training for the Park Museum staff. Um, we've also been working on creating a common website platform, moving uh, the, the cultural organizations in the park who, who are interested to Drupal and open source platforms so that we can then support their websites and roll out uh, new features. Uh, the focus on digitization and collection access um, I'll talk a little bit more about with the Commons Project. We're also experimenting a lot in the gaming and mobile app space, any way that helps museums um, engage visitors and um, have new relationships with visitors and access more visitors. And we also provide uh, uh, technical services. And one thing that 
we did that was actually uh, pretty important for the park is a um, uh, implemented uh, park-wide fiber to provide Wi-Fi. When I first worked in the park, I could barely use my phone, and now I could use it everywhere, and you could use it in the museums. And, you know, it didn't make sense to work on all these digital projects and not have uh, accessibility in the park to, to access digital media. So um, I think that's been a really great contribution. So to give you just a little bit of idea of the kind of museums that we work with and the museums that uh, will be on the Commons website is um, we have a, a wonderful model railroad museum, a Museum of Photographic Arts, a Japanese Friendship Garden, which is just expanding, uh, the San Diego Natural History Museum, the San Diego Museum of Air and Space, and um, just, just an example. And why a Commons? Early on when BPOC was founded, the partner museums got together and set priorities for the organizations. And um, many of them did, and they still, many of them still do not have their collections online. So as visitors to museums, as users as we of websites, you expect that when you go to a museum website that you're gonna see their collections online, you're gonna see everything, but actually for a lot of small to medium um, size museums, this is still a really difficult thing to do. So um, we've been working on a collections online effort, which is the Commons is a part of, and we've also been working on getting the museum's collections up on Flickr. The San Diego uh, Museum of Air and, um, Air and Space Museum have been on Flickr for the last three years, and they have about 10 million uh, views of their collections. So they've published on Flickr, and it's been really, it's been really great for them. Um, we're also doing an internal commons so the museums can share their assets with each other for intellectual use, for um, building exhibitions, and for publications. Many of the museums don't know what each other has, and they don't really work very collaboratively on their exhibitions. So, um, And then the Balboa Park Commons project. And this is a slide um, that really shows the, ar the architecture that we're building to publish um, digital, digital collections. And we're using a digital asset management system as kind of the hub for all the resources. But from um, into the digital asset management system is all the collection information from the different museums collection management systems. So you have all this staff who are putting in putting in their data in their collection management systems, and then we take that out, we put that into the digital asset management system, and then from there, we have, that's where we publish. And we're building this infrastructure now, and some of it is, is up and running, and other parts we're still building. So we're building the private within the park for them to share. We're building the Balboa Park Commons website. We're, we're starting to put um, collections on individual museum websites. And then we've done a lot of work pushing um, collections onto social media, um, Flickr and YouTube primarily. So it's really a, a digital publication model that we're building, and the Balboa Park Commons is just one um, part of it. And to give you an idea of the kind of collections, we're working with the fabulous folks at the Museum of Natural History's Library and Archive. We're working with the Air and Space Film Archive and Photography Archive. We're working with the San Diego Museum of Art and, and getting their collection online and in the commons. And then an example of another organization is the World Beat Center. Doesn't have a collection. It's, it's dedicated to um, reggae music and reggae culture. And, but yet we've digitized over 300 videos of performances. So, um, so all the organizations in the park have a lot of really rich um, information that hasn't really been accessible because it's not digitized or it's not readily available. So the infrastructure to be able to create a commons um, is uh, digitization. Many of the museums that we work with had not uh, done any digitization, didn't really know how to do it. Some of them had started their own efforts and what we did is we came in and, and helped them with those efforts. Um, we've also worked on uh, implementing common collection management systems, data standards, and a digital asset management system. So we've deployed three rapid, rapid capture digitization stations. That was a mouthful. 
And um, they exist for photography, film, video, and books. And in the last three years, we've uh, digitized over 250,000 photographs and videos. And these are mobile stations. And they basically go from, for those of the, you that have been in the park, they basically go from museum to museum when um, the archive or collection staff have stuff they want to digitize. And in the beginning, we had technicians that uh, worked on digitization. But the idea was to actually have the museum staff and volunteers do this work themselves. So we're really trying to create a sustainable model where it's not just BPOC staff doing it because you know we could go away and we were just a project so we might have gone away. So this whole project is built on the philosophy that we create an infrastructure that is automated as much as it can be and it's sustainable and, and easy to, to update. So now we have museum staff and volunteers doing all their own digitization. So to give you an idea of the kind of digitization here is a photograph of a McDonnell Douglas Hornet that was on Flickr Commons Top 10 from the Air and Space Archives. Um, the San Diego Junior Theater digitized all their playbooks, over 50 years of documentations of their plays. And then the um, Museum of Photographic Arts got this really wonderful collection of um, mug shots from like the 1920s uh, that were just digitized. So we, like I had mentioned before, we had, we've digitized approximately 250,000 images and videos um, for about 22 museums, libraries, and archives. And we have about 400, 430,000 uh, total assets on our servers. And then uh, we've been working with six different cataloging systems. And then the digital asset management system that we use from, from Fiction is one digital asset management system for all. And then this is just an example of the digital asset management system. And I, and I believe this is MOPA's installation. And what I wanted to show you is um, we're using this for the commons. So the idea is that we have one digital asset management system, but each museum gets their own private version that they use for managing their assets. And then there's a component of that where they can push their collections to the, to the public commons. And they do that by just doing a search of what they want to put in the commons and then actually putting it into lightbox folders. So this is actually what the Minge International Museum of Craft has in their commons. Um, so they've taken, this, they've taken these assets, put them into a folder, and then they have these little subfolders here that are for featured sets. So if they want the public to, if they want to share, you know, everything that they have in their collection on cats, which I think they have actually in the commons right now, they, they can create that. And, and the Minge has been creating a lot of sets based on their exhibitions. So you could see what's, what's on view in the Balboa Park commons. So again, the idea is they can just easily put um, assets into folders to make them go, go live. They go live overnight and um, collections can kind of come and go that way. And the BPOC staff, um, we're helping with it now, but the idea is that they could do this all, all on their own. And then it's super easy. So, because we want it to be sustainable and we also want to give them a tool they could use for their internal structures and their internal processes, but it also benefits the public. And oh, these slides, I have to tell you, I took the next slides from my coworker colleague, Perry and Sully. She is our manager of collections and online uh, access. And she actually does all the data handling of the collections, um, bringing it onto the commons. And so, um, and I thought her slides were really, really great. So I wanted to share them with you. So what she does is the manual extraction of multiple data sets for, um, putting all the collection data on the commons, so that's her job. In order to do it, she does a lot of cleanup. Then she identifies places in the data that, that are breaking down where um, you know, the data isn't ingesting into the dams or into the commons, right? So then she does more cleanup. Then she creates a crosswalk, which I'll explain in a minute. And then after cleanup, she uh, tries to ingest the data again and prays that it'll work. And then uh, she sees if it's clean yet. If it's not, she keep, keeps cleaning it up. And then when it's ingested, it's time to have a beer. <laughs> so, 
This is the work on the front lines that someone like Perian has been doing to, um, to aggregate the data and get it into a common tool set. And then um, the crosswalk is something that we've been doing in, in, in Piction, which is the digital asset management system, where we're putting all the collections in there and then pushing it to the commons. Well, museums name their title and talk about their data differently. So this slide will show you three institutions that have different names for item ID. For example, the Natural History Museum uses the object ID. The Museum of Photographic Arts uses accession number. And San Diego Antiques Museum uses catalog number. So uh, we've created a crosswalk where that's all fed into one field that's called item ID. And why this crosswalk is important because we have the problem, the great problem of this website is to figure out how to present all this diverse and very different uh, collection information from science museums, history museums, art museums, cultural centers, you know, in one interface where it makes some kind of sense. So that's our goal. And so this kind of data work um, is really important to, in order to do that. And so I've talked to you a lot about the infrastructure that we've been building for the um, shared um, online commons. And um, I think that is really uh, one of the most important things that we're doing is building that structure. But I want to tell you a little bit about the front end that we've been building as well. So we received a leadership grant from the IMLS, um, the Institute of Museum and Library Services, uh, two years ago, over two years ago, and uh, for the Balboa Park Online Commons. And that has, uh, project has really funded the creation of the uh, user interface, the website. So Balboa Park uh, was really committed to all these efforts, uh, but the grant funding really allowed us to um, put the effort into building the online component. And so, um, we started, once we received the grant, we started um, by putting together some community groups with San Diego teachers, asking them what they would want from the commons. They want to be able to find assets really easily. They want to be able to use them. They want them to be big and beautiful and free and easy to use. Um, very much like what, what Will was saying. We worked with the design company to identify our, our audience and also um, figure out what would the experience of this uh, online portal be, what does it look like, and we created a very extensive set of wireframes and designs, and um, we've been building the site now for, for a while, and in April we had our first prototype. And what was really interesting about working on this project, and um, my, my project team members are in the audience, um, is that it's been a moving target for us because we've been building the, the interface at the same time that we've been building the infrastructure. So we actually were working on a website where we didn't really have access to the data until early spring. And because we were moving museums on to the digital asset management system. So it wasn't until that happened where we could really roll up our sleeves and understand what we were dealing with. So what happened was the design that we built we built for something that maybe we can do three, four years down the road. Um, we, built, we had a design that was really about telling stories about the collections and telling stories across collections. And that was a wonderful vision, it was a wonderful design, but the collections that we have right now um, don't have those connections because they haven't been made yet. And many of the collections that we have don't have a lot of rich metadata but that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be accessible. So many museums feel very uh, uncomfortable about making their uh, collection information available online until it's perfect. Well, it's very difficult. When are we going to get to perfect? You don't know when perfect's going to happen, so let's, let's, let's do it. Let, it. Let's get it out there, and then it will grow over time. So we realized when we had this prototype um, together that we, we had a problem because we had designed something for something that we didn't really have. So we needed to step back and that's what we did and we came up with a, um, um, a new design that really worked with the collection information that we have now. And I actually want to show you uh, the site. So this is, 
this is the um, prototype that we're working on right now. We're hoping that we'll launch in a couple weeks. And it's right now at a URL, URL called staging.commons.bpoc.org. But when it goes live, it will be at balboaparkcommons.org and .com. And it's a work in progress right now. There's still a bunch of stuff that we're working on. But I wanted to show you the major functionality of the site. It's very simple right now. Our first design, it was very complicated, had tons of feature sets, tons of things to do. And now what we're launching to is launching with is a very streamlined presentation of the collections. So here you have, um, right now there's seven museums on the commons. And you can browse by museum. And I'm going to just go into um, Museum of Photographic Arts. So you can view, and you can download individual images, and you can share. And there are actually three views. You have a light box view, a large image size view, and then when you click in, um, you get all the data uh, with the image, and then you can click for a larger, uh, larger image, and then you can also download. Uh, I'm having PC problems. <laughs> okay, so, um, so, and then, oh, the mouse is a wonderful thing. Then the other thing that you should do is you can log in. Um, so you can create sets. And again, since our focus is on educators, the educator told us we just want the stuff, okay? So, that's a tweet if I ever heard one. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody together. <laughs> we just won the stuff. We won the stuff, so. Okay, that wasn't my login. This is my login. Okay. So you can create sets. And, and um, I'm just going to show you how to add something to your set, so. I'm already here. I want to add this. I just go down here and I press the plus button. And then what I could do is I could download the set as a PowerPoint, so or a zip file or a PDF. And it will come with the data, and the images will also have embedded data. And then we will uh, make this, once we launch, we will make the collection data available um, to, as an API for people to use. So. That is just kind of an overview of the actual site that we're, that we're building. All of this. So the benefits is that the benefits of this work that we're doing is to be able to show multiple collections and collections um, to have them represented online. And this will give um, users, visitors, people the ability to make new discoveries. So we had created a design that was really sophisticated where we assumed that those discoveries were already created. And what we realized is we're just making, we're creating an accessible website where people can make their own discoveries. And then what's also great about what we're building is that it's great for SEO. The way that we're pulling the data out there um, will make it, make it available to people. And then what's really exciting about this, and I've been, I've started to go around San Diego and show it to teachers, is that um, the cross-collection searching um, is possible, and I meant to actually do a search for dogs so you could see all the different uh, collection items that have dogs. There are four or five museums that are in the commons who have, um, you know, photographs of dogs or, or um, ceramic dogs. So if you were doing a research paper on something and you were, you know, water, you do a search for water, you can look across the museums and see what they have that might be of interest to you on water. So it's really great for cross-collection uh, searching. Um, and each organization can participate as much or as little as they want. And again, this is what was really a uh, really important factor of the project is that it's flexible. So museums can come and go, and we're actually talking to several organizations, community organizations in San Diego that uh, volunteer-based that are digitiz digitizing historical uh, photography. And we're talking to them about getting them up in the comments. 
And then we have this great digital asset management system that the museums can use for their own asset management. The limitations, though, is that migrating data from different databases limits the ability to bring in uh, complex information. So, because um, we're, we're creating a shared portal for, for all these different data sets, so sometimes it makes it very difficult to customize it for sophisticated searching, and, and that's been difficult. Um, di distribution of finding aids and links to item level records is complicated. Um, also, Im showing you those images, those derivatives, um, we've had to be very flexible in, in making compromises about the image uh, sizes that we can present online because some of the museums, with their digitization efforts, they might have had smaller images. Some have high res, so we can't really give you or give the public um, fabulous high res images because uh, for a lot of the institutions, we just don't have that right now. Um, and then adherence to specific standards is loose. I also took this from my coworker, Parian. So, so the better the museum standards on data is the better quality of what you're gonna be putting out there, but we're working with a lot of different cultural institutions that might not have staff that are dedicated to that, and they're just, they're just learning how to implement data standards. So, and again, very little content available to present rich uh, storytelling. And then, um, just for a takeaway, I was thinking about um, how that you, um, who are watching this panel, what you might get out of the model that we're, that we're building. If, if you're a student, if this is something that would inform your digital humanities work, what are the, the lessons that we're learning putting this commons together that can inform your work? Uh, or is this a kind of project you would like to work on? Is this a model that you could take back to your institution? Even though you might um, be working on museum-related projects or uh, digital humani humanity projects that aren't about shared collections, a lot of the model of what we're doing is trying to make things accessible, try to do it quickly, try to get it up and out the door, is a model that I think can be um, replicable, something that an effort that really is from the ground ground up. So I just think for, I hope that this project is a good example of, of that kind of work. Thank you very much. <laughs>